No, I'm not doing it. I'll do it if you give me a biscuit. Thank you. You're listening to the Failing Writers Podcast. What? If you want more feeling, I'm going to need another custard cream, please. All right, chaps. Hello, 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 hello. everybody. Hello, How hello, are we hello. all? All right, yeah, not bad, not yeah. bad. Yeah, feeling a lot better. Thanks very much for yeah, asking, no guys. Cares. Let's just crack on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get in with the question that we should be asking every time. Yeah. What have you been writing this week, fellas? Uh, Davey, you said you had something. Like you had, you made it sound interesting. I so, wouldn't say it's interesting. Uh, why don't you go first? But I have written something. Well, I started off. I think I said that my next thing was going to be. I was going to write the second series of anything for you. The radio oh, comedy yeah, yeah, that yeah. I did. And oh, I did you start. That, have you? No. Done? No. Well done. I've abandoned it for now. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sidelined it, not abandoned. Not abandoned. It's so just put it on the back burner. I, I, I've, mm. sort of, I've planned out. Brilliant. Well, thanks for the update, Dave. John, what have you been <laughs> writing this week? <laughs> so I, like, I've planned out the series and I started writing the first episode. And then, yeah. just last week, I suddenly had a revelation about mm-hmm. um, the spooky war book. My dad's book, Ooh, the Remembrance yeah. Day thing, that I because I I finished the draft of it and I put it aside, yep. and I was going to leave it for a while, and then I just suddenly had an epiphany about how to not completely rewrite it, but to to rephrase it as such. Mm, right. And yeah, and I thought it was such a good idea that I had to just start writing it. So I did. Oh, I started brilliant. doing that. Wow. And it's basically just changing the point of view of the whole book, so all the action and everything that oh, happens. Is that it? Yeah. So that's just a, just a quick tinker. Ten minute, if you ten minute tinker, <laughs> and that's done, yeah, then, isn't it? <laughs> I did think that, but it turns out to be a bit more complicated than that. Yeah. Um. But it's just, it's just a change of who is actually telling the story. Ah. So who's telling the story now? Are you allowed to tell? Yeah. it? Yeah. Well, basically, my dad, although not actually my dad, but the, the sort of <laughs> character that most closely resembles my dad. Right. Um. The sort of so he's the leader of the cadet force in 1989. Mm. But uh, much like my dad, my dad uh, spent a, f- a few years working at the local heritage centre, surrounded mm. by sort of different memories of things in the town. And they did displays about the First World War and that sort of thing. So I had this idea of uh, the whole story being told from the point of view of somebody in like the now, basically looking back on it with all the sort of all, all the memories of, uh, of the time and oh, the nice. little sort of relics from the First World War. Yeah, um, I like that. Yeah. So it becomes the so because this they the detective a detective or the police finds some human remains and they're trying to figure out who it is, and uh, through this through this investigation, all the story of the stuff that happened in 1989 is dredged up, alongside the sort of the old stories from the First World War as well, which informs it all. So I like that. Do you know what I like about that as well is that. Uh, it being somebody's memory, you're never quite sure what they've sort of made up and what, yeah. you know what I mean? It's unreliable narrator. Exactly, right. yeah. How reliable yeah. are they? Yeah. I like that. And it just, it just makes it, because so, so, there were so many little bits that were sort of important to the story, but you couldn't really build a whole chapter around them. But if you've got somebody who's yeah, just yeah. talking about their memories, it's really easy to get those little details in in really subtle ways. Yeah, yeah. That sounds really good, that, Dave. That's great. Yeah, I'm quite excited by it. So you're actually inspired to go back yes. and start again. So have you, have you gone right back to the beginning? You're literally like, okay, page one, chapter yes. one. Yes, so I'm doing go. that, and I'm trying. I'm, I'm also, um, because I, another upcoming episode we have is sort of reviewing some writing software. So I'm using a different bit of writing software, which makes it even more exciting. Mm. Uh, and I'm writing some totally mm. new bits and I'm importing some bits from the old version and sort of changing it about. Um, so yeah, I'm quite, I'm quite infused and excited by it. So I'm gonna try and get as much done as I can whilst I, I'm actually still excited before the novelty wears off. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and it becomes a drudgery again. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm, I, yes, but it's weird. I just haven't had a moment like that in ages where something suddenly occurs to you and you go, oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what, you did exactly the right thing, didn't you? You walked away from it and let your subconscious mm. kind exactly, of yeah. m- mull it over and then just waited for the Yeah, well, it's because the all like the things that yeah. we've done when we did the Logline episode and other things that sort of revealed. I was about to ask you that. Have you rewritten the logline? I'm, I'm working on that at the minute because it, that sort of revealed how the story wasn't working. Yeah, yeah. So I've had all these things in my mind about what the problems were and what the issues are. Um, and then 
this is sort of this solution just popped out of nowhere, which addresses all those things. So I'm going to write the log line from the, you know, from the viewpoint of the yeah, new yeah. angle. Ah, oh, good news, Baddy. So, yeah, that's Love exciting. It. Love it. For now. Like anyway, you haven't yeah. got enough uh, writing to do at the moment. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there's no, nothing else on, is there? So. Oh, that's brilliant. very pleasing. Yeah, it is brilliant. Yeah, very yeah well done, mate. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. What about, what about you guys? I, uh, do you know what? I have been writing. I've been, uh, oh. I've been trying to outline the murder mystery book that we're supposed to be writing for NaNoWriMo uh, in November. Ah. Uh, I thought, how yeah. the hell am I going to manage to write a book in November if I don't actually plot it out properly? So I've started doing that. I've actually really been enjoying that. I've um, I found, I don't know if this is how people tend to write their crime uh, mystery thrillers or whatever, but I just started by putting down, basically writing down all the suspects and what their relationship to the dead person at the beginning is uh, and okay. how and the reasons why they might have wanted to kill her basically their their motives for killing yeah. her and i'm not even 100% sure who's killed them yet i just thought let's work out a few people yeah. and then sort of take it from there and actually it's a brilliant starting point i don't know if um i don't know if that's that's probably it's probably standard isn't it that's probably how you're supposed to do yeah, it it's quite an interesting take on it though isn't it i think they call that would they call that the prior row method where they gather, you're basically metaphorically gathering them all in a room. Gathering people into a room. Yeah, yeah I, I think you're probably right. But suddenly all the little story yeah, yeah. Um, threads all seem to be kind of coming out as I'm writing everyone's motivation. So it does, it does seem to work quite well. And a lot of those people are all connected to each yeah. other in sort of secret ways as well. And that's all quite interesting. So, yeah, I've uh, been really enjoying that. Yeah, I bet. I guess good to know. All these little hidden secret uh, links between the characters. It's all that sort of stuff that you know as the author, but the reader doesn't know. That's it, right. It informs everything, isn't and it? you slowly drip feed to the, yeah. the reader. Yeah. So I've been doing that. I've also been working on the marriage show. Uh, the Happy Married Show with Katie. Yeah, that's been very nice. That's our Monday morning oh, uh, slot at the moment. We've been uh, been working on that and coming up with a few ideas. So yeah, nice. it's been it's been busy. Wow, productive. Yeah, very productive. Uh, and that in amongst all the uh, we have been very busy with the podcast as well. So it's uh, yeah, I've probably been I've probably been more busy than I have been for literally years. Probably since I was a teacher, I would say. I don't think I've worked <laughs> as hard since I was a teacher. What about you, Tommy? Yeah. What have you been doing? Well, hang on, hang on. Well, when were you a teacher? Uh, <laughs> did you not know I was a teacher? That was a long time ago, to be fair. M maybe I did know, but maybe it was so long ago that I've forgotten that. Um, not far fresh out of, fresh out of uni. I, I taught, I taught oh. A-level uh, theatre studies and film studies for, uh, oh, for a couple of years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did know that. Yeah. You almost feel slightly bilious, don't you, Dave? How, how cool teacher John would have been <laughs> fresh out of uni. <laughs> Yeah, kids, these are sandals. That's what I'm wearing to class. You can call me John. Yeah, wearing yeah. a cravat. Yeah. I wish that were true. Speaking of teachers in schools, I feel a bit like, um, you know, if you're in class at school and you knew the answer to a question, or you're always like, right, everyone suggests something, and, and then because you come round last, your suggestion has been taken. <laughs> My answer is pretty much the same as John's. I was doing exactly the, exactly the same mindset of, if we're going to do narrow we were rhymo, then... I am going to have to plan stuff out. So I'm I'm actually planning two different books. What? Um, and and then I'm going to... Well, I'm not going to write them both at the same <laughs> One time. One with each hand. Yeah. I'm going to plan them both up, do the whole beats, save the cats, <laughs> pants in planning things yeah. and what have you, and then just choose which one to go wow. with. So you've got two... I, this, this isn't... So one of them's based on the like the first chapter of the murder mystery we did. Yeah. And the other one's totally fresh. No, the other one's um, a reworking of the one that kind of stalled that I was doing the uh murder mystery without the murder. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 so that kind of okay. that kind of just hit a bit of you know it just kind of grinds mm. to a halt and i think that was pretty much because it wasn't planned yeah. out past some ridiculous things and i did say after i read the now take off your pants book that i was gonna plan it and this is the this is that time now i've got around to it. Coming, so i figured yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna around. plan both of them out and then i can just go do you know what actually i'm on that one or Oh, I'll yeah, fancy yeah. that one. Yeah. And then they're both planned out for the future. Well, as well. that's a nice to yeah. have, isn't it? But no, I thought exactly the same as John. I thought, do you know, yeah, because I can, I can write a lot of words quickly. I'm, I'm pretty good mm. in terms of churning stuff out. I think I've been well trained from my time writing radio ads at the, do you know, when someone walks in and goes, oh, mm. this is on air in 20 minutes. Is that how I can you write <laughs> it? 
And then, yeah, <laughs> and I'd, I'd get it written, do you know what I mean, on mountains and stuff. So I can do the volume of it, but obviously you need you need that plan. You've got to know pathway, what you're doing you? first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the actual volume of writing for Nano Remo Remo doesn't bother me, but the yeah. sat there going, oh, what's next? After getting stuck in this one yeah, yeah. does. So, yeah, that's... Uh, yeah. That's what I've been I think doing. especially for a murder mystery, because it is like an intricate jigsaw puzzle, isn't it? You've got all these pieces yeah. that you've got to kind of fit together, and if you don't have a, a sort of roadmap of how that's going to work, you could, <laughs> could come unstuck fairly quickly, I think. Yeah. And you, uh, yeah, and I think you'd miss out on layering in the stuff as well, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Do you mean you, yeah. you, you you're giving, you're Basically, by not doing that, you're giving yourself one or two extra edits. Yeah, yeah. Do you mean in terms Although after like, listening to Gillian's interview, I'm, uh, I'm kind of okay, I think. Just getting it done and maybe potentially just... Deleting it yeah, all. Yeah, just deleting it all. Because <laughs> you, you will inevitably get ideas out of it. Yeah, as it you may, know. It may be better Yeah, yeah and it's time. almost like you will just remember the best bits yeah. out of it. It's like, yeah. a civ- it's like sieving it out, isn't it? Yeah. You just end up with the good stuff. I think you've got to be okay with it, haven't you? You've got to be okay with yeah. just going back to the start. Isn't it yeah. mad that after yeah, 40 years of inactivity, uh, by the <laughs> end of this year, we're going to have a whole library of books yeah ready to Lots go of stuff. Mm. i think we and all the other stuff all bits and bobs of of things we've done with the podcast but then that was literally the point of the well, podcast. was wasn't it so i think we need well, to get in true. touch with jonathan ross and book the slot really aren't we for the new year yeah, yeah definitely <laughs> definitely <laughs> definitely um so well done us well done well done, well done everyone well done, yeah. well done us well, congratulations <laughs> congratulations on thinking about what we're going to write. <laughs> Small steps. Small yeah. steps. Well. So. Yeah. But the big news of the moment, though, is the competition, isn't Have it? you checked our emails? Uh, yes. Got a lot of entries. Haven't we just? Actual entries for our competition. I know. It's, it's quite like, exciting. No, it's brilliant. And they're all dead varied. It's exactly what we wanted as well. Like they're all dead like varied and they're taking different angles. And some of them are like ones yeah, that make yeah. you go, what? Some of them make you go. Oh. Yeah, it's really good, really good. But we could do with some more entries, really. Yeah, we? hell, yeah. Keep them coming. Always. The more the merrier. The more the merrier. I assume there's a lot of people out there listening right now that are busy beavering away on stuff, and they'll be like, "What? People have sent them in already? What on earth?" Uh, but w- when when is the deadline? Isn't it the twenty second of October? It is. Yeah, one minute to one minute to midnight. One, <laughs> hey! one minute's the witching hour. So you've got on the twenty second. There's still time, unless you're still listening. Still time, isn't there? there? Is. Unless you're listening to this after the twenty second of October. Oh, then there's no time. There's no there's time at all. Right. Still right yeah. one just for fun. Yeah, why not? Um, but it is very exciting to have a competition on the go. But there are lots of other. We don't just leave it there and rest on our laurels, no, do we? we? Don't. We've got other exciting no, things going we on. We have. We have. Starting with uh, a bit of a break from the norm. It is. It's a bit of a change because... of direction this week, isn't it? It's looking yeah, at uh, it writing from a different perspective. Mm. Writing with pictures, yeah. which some might call drawing. <laughs> but, yeah, that could catch on there. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yes. But we have an illustrator and writer. Let's not pigeonhole him. Although yeah. I think you probably do pigeonhole him at some point, John. But... Uh, I think I might yeah. have done. I, th- I think straight away, Let's didn't he? Let's really? yeah. take him out of that pigeonhole and say he is a writer and an illustrator and not failing it either. No, I think the worst thing you could possibly do if you're going into an interview like this is kind of, you know, pigeonhole them straight away and just call them an illustrator. <laughs> yeah. When they're obviously quite proud of the writing, quite rightly quite proud of the writing too. Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. secondly, I think it's annoying for people, isn't it, if they've had kind of one big gig that was kind of high profile. Yeah. Yeah. And they've done loads of other stuff question. and don't worked mention that that. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you don't, you certainly mm. don't. You don't want to. Yeah, it's not the first. Thing yeah, you don't be, dwell on the past. It's not yeah. the first thing you want to be saying to them. Yeah. So, uh, no, no, so no. let's avoid that. Then. We are very pleased to introduce um, a first on this podcast. We've got a book illustrator, book illustrator Jason Cockcroft. Hello. 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 A mutual friend of ours mentioned you, and I thought, oh, an illustrator, that'd be cool. I wonder if I've, I wonder if I've ever seen any work that they've done before. I very much doubt it. And, <laughs> and then I went on your website, and the first thing I see are the flipping Harry Potter books. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's quite a nice thing to have on your CV. Yeah, they were quite 
quite successful. <laughs> it yeah. was quite a popular um, series, wasn't it? I'm led to believe. I don't know if you remember them. There were there were this kind of fantasy series about <laughs> is it Harry. About Harry, Wizards. what is it? Yeah, it's a long yeah, time ago. It was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So how did that how did that come about? We'll get this one out of the way first, then we we can move on to, to other things. <laughs> it's, it's almost Jason. It's almost like we've got a list of questions you're fed up of answering. Isn't it? We'll go through those first. I am a writer as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. just mentioned yeah. that. But yeah, um, my career most of it is taken up with illustration. Yeah, if I'm known for anything, it'll be because of the Harry Potter covers, and it's just because um, I had worked a long time with the publisher at the time, Bloomsbury. And oh, so I see. So they kind of put you forward. Yeah, when it came up, they trusted me. I could draw things, um, <laughs> and I could draw things on time. So um, <laughs> those were two good. fundamental things uh, to do with being a successful illustrator. He's competent. Yeah. He's competent and quick. That'll do. <laughs> <On cheap. laughs> Are you suggesting they were quick turnaround? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think the first one I did in a weekend. Wow! Wow! I think I got a phone call from my agent on the Friday right. and then I did the illustration over the weekend blimey um, and a curry came I think it was on Monday morning and picked <laughs> blimey. it up blimey so. wow She's, is she, yeah, she is supposed to be really quick. impatient isn't she JK <laughs> she's like come on guys I need it fast it did, it did come back to me with a few changes <laughs> that needed to be made but um, yeah all in all it probably took about three days work which was wow you know, fastest jobs well they're very <laughs> they're very beautiful mind. things oh thank you yeah absolutely and so yeah so coming back to your writing <laughs> uh <laughs> we don't have to. i did i introduced you i'd introduce you unfairly purely as a book illustrator but that's not the entire story is it because you are an author in your own right too in fact i am about uh two-thirds of the way through your illustrated novel we were wolves very much enjoying it by the way thank you can you tell us a bit about the book and also why your need to tell that story as well it's the story of a boy and his father who uh, live in an abandoned caravan in the woods in west yorkshire the father has got um, mental health issues mm. and he doesn't um, deal too well with the outside world and they've retreated from it yeah he's an ex-soldier isn't he that's right he suffers from ptsd mm. um and the boy is there kind of looking after him um they're looking for a, a little haven in the woods away from the outside world and the outside world encroaches uh, in the form of a local gangster and uh, it leads to tragedy mm. um the story came about really because um i wanted to tell a story about uh, the love between a father and son and that's fundamentally the yeah, theme yeah. of it so that was your starting point, and then you kind of developed this yeah. relationship. Yeah, uh, there's not many stories really about father and son relationships. Um, there's Danny the Champion of the World, the yeah. Roald Dahl book, which yeah, when I was a kid, yeah. strangely, I really didn't like it because it, it didn't have any of the venom and spite <laughs> and horror of the yeah, other yeah. Roald Dahl uh, stories. But yeah. when I read it as an it's adult... lots of raisins in it. <laughs> there's a lot of raisins, yeah. a lot of drugged pheasants, yes. which, you know... Is, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's a big thing in the 70s and uh, 80s. When oh, you couldn't, was... go, you couldn't go anywhere in the 70s, <laughs> could you? Tripping over the buggers. Bloody what, hell. Oh, what's that? More bloody oh pheasants <laughs> everywhere. But yeah, when I was old and uh, an adult and read it, I, I just loved the, the tenderness of it, which I probably didn't enjoy that much as a kid. So that, that's what I wanted to emulate um, in quite yeah. a, a dark yeah, way. Yeah, it's very gritty, isn't it? It's very... It, it is. feels very gritty. Um, it feels very real as well. It's sort of. And thank you. It almost um, reads like it's loosely autobiographical, I would say, but it obviously um, isn't. <laughs> yeah, it's not autobiographical. I mean, the the, the themes are very um, important to me. Um, I I've, there's mental illness in my family. There's mental health problems in in friends and family mm -hmm. that I've known. And I lost uh, my father um, ten years ago, and he's nothing like um, the father in the book. And yeah. um, but but yeah, it's it's the it's the loss of him and how the repercussions that that had in my life yeah. and my family's life um, that I wanted to explore really. So that was kind of the spur for writing the book. Had you written a novel before that? <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I've written about five novels. I've oh, written. Right. I mean, I haven't published any of these. Uh, I published a, a, a children's um, middle grade novel mm -hmm. about. 11, 12 years ago in the States, um, which disappeared and sank without a trace. And apparently nobody remembers it, <laughs> <laughs> including me. Uh, I can't quite remember the plot. But again, um, it was, you know, it was a, 
a fun story about death and grief. So um, <laughs> there's a so theme. That, yeah, <laughs> there is a theme. Some yeah. things yeah. never go out of fashion, do they? <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've written all through my career. Sometimes I've mm. submitted it to publishers. Sometimes yeah. I haven't. I wasn't going to submit We Were Wolves, to be honest, because it's probably the least commercial thing I've written for children, at least, or for young people. I don't people. know. Kids like um, a little bit of death. If you they look do. At, look at more Pergo. He loves a he loves a dark tale, doesn't he? Well, I didn't have high hopes for it, to be honest. I sent it yeah. into my agent, mm. and um, and they liked it. Um, and then a few publishers were interested in it, and finally went with uh, Anderson, who were just fantastic. And it's one of the best mm. jobs I've ever had, and one of the best working relationships I've had. So the, just the production of the book, and how it looks, and and you know how yeah. it feels as an object as well. I'm, I'm it very is proud a beautiful it. thing. It has to be said. So did did you did you have some of the illustrations when you showed? the novel as well or was it just on the back of the writing yeah and um, when i write i i never really visualize it as an illustrated book even right. even when i write picture books um which might seem odd but it's yes a, it's... that does seem very odd <laughs> it does, does seem it. Odd. Yes. <laughs> i'm trying to get my head around this I mean, yeah. publishers <laughs> think it's odd too and when i'm writing lost... a picture book i definitely don't <laughs> think about the pictures I try to think of the story (laughs) Um, and the the pictures will inevitably come Um, but yeah publishers have always been fascinated by how unvisual (laughs) my writing is Um, but yeah it's a different part of the brain and it's a different discipline and with We Were Wolves and I didn't even think of it as an illustrated book and it was only when I was discussing it with publishers that we came across the idea. Do you treat it then very much like if you're illustrating somebody else's book so you you know, you read the book, get a feel of it, and then and then the illustrations come from there. Uh, yeah, I do try to do that. I mean, that that's you know obviously because it's it's my story. I was a little bit more selfish and in control, I suppose. But yeah, I, I try to treat it like every book I've ever illustrated, and and work with the publishers to to get the best images and the best illustrations for the book. This might seem sound like a bit of a stupid question, but what what do you see your job as? Are you are you simply trying to give as close a representation mm. of the words on the page as you can, or do you see it as your job to sort of embellish the words and add to the atmosphere and the characters and stuff? Yeah, I mean, you, you're trying to read between the lines of the story and add something that's obviously uh, within the story but um, isn't explicit mm. there. That's quite a fine line to walk, isn't it? It is, and it's, it's quite complicated mm. sometimes. I mean, usually you have a, a strong or hopefully you have a strong brief from the publishers. Right. And sometimes, not always, um, you, you get to meet the, the writer right. and you can discuss exactly what they had in mind. Yeah, yeah. And what I've always done as an illustrator, it might sound a little over-practical and not particularly romantic, but um, it's the publisher that's employing me, so I try to give them what they want. Obviously, they're in a relationship with the, yeah. the author as well. You don't, get, you don't get into, like, three-way battles. You can do, because <laughs> sometimes... Uh, publishers don't want you to have a particular relationship with um, the author because it's it's easier for them, frankly, just to just to brief you. <laughs> right. And I've had yeah. some great relationships yeah, yeah. with authors and some quite funny ones. Um, there was a job early on where I was doing a covers for a book series for for middle grade um, readers, and the author had been contracted to mm-hmm. do these four books, and she had outlined the synopses of of each story. Then I went away to do the covers but in communication with the author. And with one of the books, she couldn't go ahead with the plot. She just lost yeah. it for some reason. She she wasn't interested in the plot synopsis that she'd given. Right. And she, she changed it from, um, <laughs> I think it was a group of children. I think they were looking for the Loch Ness Monster or something like that. And she she changed it um, to, they were putting on a magic show. It's quite, it's quite a big... <laughs> they were still linked, and, uh, very much linked idea. Yeah, it's quite yeah. a... <laughs> Quite a jump, isn't I it? I love the idea of the book going out with a <laughs> totally random yeah. cover on it. I mean, with she, Loch Ness Monster. She's a, she was a lovely person. She is a lovely person. She's a fantastic writer. Um, but what I don't realise is that she hadn't mentioned it to the publisher. Ah. <laughs> so, so I delivered a cover she artwork. She a beautiful um, picture of the Loch Ness Monster. And I'm going, what's this got to do with magic? <laughs> well, um, unfortunately, it was the other way around. I think they, they thought I'd skimped on the special effects. And it was just an, a, just an, an image of a magic show. And they were expecting the Loch Ness Monster. Monster. And yeah, I think they thought I'd gone insane. Um, but I tried to explain what had happened. And I think it went okay in the end. Uh, Jason, I, I was gonna say I've got a question. It's not really a question. It's more of a statement of my, yeah. what I think. 
Um, <laughs> Do you want me to respond to this? Or? I don't know. You choose how you want it to go. Um, okay. A, I guess it's a compliment, really. Um, one of my pet peeves with artists and drawing people in general. You just say just one of your pet peeves. Just one. Yeah. Tom. This got, is just one of them. <laughs> just while you're here, right, artists. <laughs> Let me tell you some things that I don't like. It's when they have a, a set style that they have to, that, you know, when you look at it, you think, oh, yeah, that's that. And they kind of live mm. off kind of almost regurgitating one painting or one form. Your stuff is is like so different. It really is. <laughs> All over no, no, the place. But it's just like, and I think that's yeah. such a huge quality to have of being able to, not just do you know it's not, someone's not someone's going to get you to do it because yes. they want they know you can deliver something in the way they want not just because they happen to want oh this needs to be a, a jason cockcroft because that's that's mm. his narrow style sort of thing and i just think i i, I don't know i think artists are sometimes rated yeah. highly for having that one yeah i, I mean your stuff's uh, fantastic in terms of that there you go it's not really a question thank you you might see it as a virtue. Um, a lot of people don't. Oh. But yeah, that, that's Well, they're I... wrong, Jason. They're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'll tell them that. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I remember the first time I went um, and saw an agent when I was still in art school, feeling very positive and confident about my work. Yeah. And I uh, showed him my portfolio and he said, you know what I'm going to tell you, don't you? And I was expecting... I'm going to take you on. I'm going to give you a thousand pounds. You're brilliant. You're genius. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're the best thing I've ever seen. And he said... Uh, you've got too many styles and publishers um, won't like that because they won't know what yeah, you do. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, the negative side of that is you get pigeonholed to do certain jobs. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I've always been interested in the, in the technical aspects of art and illustration. And that means that I want to try different styles. And I want to fit certain styles to um, certain subject mm -hmm. matter. And so the, the illustrations in We Were Wolves um, is very textured and dark. And um, mm. I wanted to use uh, black and white illustrations and uh, pen and ink work in that. That's something that I've loved uh, from childhood. And I just think it, it suits the gritty nature of the, the story. Do you have a style that you retreat to for your, I assume you, you draw for leisure and pleasure? Do you have a, a medium or a style that, that is your... Not, not a particular one, no. Um, in the past, I used to paint oil paintings and canvases and landscapes and right. portraits. Um, I started off doing comic illustration, and so there is a kind of a clean um, black and white line that I use that mm. is there in a lot of my black and white work. But now I've always, I've always changed styles. And it's good to have a single style that is recognisably yours. And um, like I say, publishers like that. They know exactly who to go to um, for a for a particular book. Well, I yeah. get that. I get that commercially, yeah. Jason. I understand that commercially, but it's not. It's not very clever, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I used to read 2000 AD, um, a comic, um, science fiction comic, when yeah. I was a kid. And oh, there's a, a John. Should we, should we go, John, and just let Dave and Jason talk about this? And <laughs> yeah, but, but he's a fan as well. <laughs> yeah, let's just have a chat about two thousand massive two thousand. There's an illustrator yeah. called Brian Bolland. Yes, who was just amazing, and yeah. pretty much every illustrator, I think thought he was technically perfect. Yeah. His style just seemed to, didn't even evolve. He just had that style right at the beginning of his career. And it's, it's yeah. changed a little bit. Um, it's become more precise in some ways, but it's, it's the same and you can, you can see it. And I'm, I'm jealous of that. You know, I'd, I'd love to have that certainty in my style. Yeah. But at the same time, because I can change style so often and I can do lots of different um, styles it has prolonged my career um, yeah. because you do fall in and out of favour and yeah. styles become fashionable mm. and then they become very unpopular and it's made this interview less awkward as well because I would have been saying yeah. to you Jason the <laughs> trouble is you've just got one style <laughs> and I, yeah. I'll probably, I'll well, probably, that, yeah. I probably would have come out with yeah. that first off before John even got the Harry Potter <laughs> stuff out I would have like, <laughs> get the right. insults in so um can we ask you about your working practices? How do you? What medium do you use? Do you do you always draw on a like a drawing tablet, or um, do you sometimes paint? Or? In, in the, I started out um, working on watercolor paper that's stretched on a an enormous board right. that I I balanced on my on my knees and uh, painted <laughs> like that for 10, 15 years until. My back couldn't take it anymore. I'm not surprised. Um, yeah, it, was, it wasn't particularly comfortable, and I was advised not to do it. Um, but yeah, I, about 10 years ago, 11 years ago, I went completely digital. Um, I do sketch 
and I still draw uh, the black and white mm. stuff um, with a, a nib pen and uh, ink. But then I scan it into a computer and work on Photoshop and, oh, and bring in textures. A lot of the colour work for the picture books, that is purely digital, apart from the early sketches and the roughs that I, I still draw in pencil. Yeah. But, but yeah, now yeah. it's, I'd say it's 80% digital. Yeah. Is that how, that's how most illustrators work these days, I'm guessing? Just yes. It's, it is more flexible. Some people are going back to drawing and painting uh, on paper. Is that like the resurgence of vinyl? <laughs> back to the analog. Yeah. Want to go back to, yeah. to the way and it used to be. It's kind yeah. of the purity of it. There's a certain romance mm. to it as well. And something that you don't get um, when you work digitally is that you can't sell the original artwork. <laughs> so, but y I think, um, since digital has overtaken illustration, publishers um, know that they can ask for a lot more changes oh, as well. Yeah, okay. So in the past, mm. I'd, I'd work in watercolour and um, you couldn't change anything. You know, if you, yeah, you, you, you can't could, mess about with that. No, you, you could paint, uh, if, if they wanted you to change a figure, um, you could paint a patch on another piece of watercolour, mm. but you'd literally have to cut it out with a scalpel and glue it onto your, <laughs> yeah. your illustration. You couldn't change colours, you couldn't change composition. Once you'd you'd agreed on the rough drawing. Whereas now, an illustration's never really finished until it goes to a print. Because, like I say, publishers know that you can change pretty much everything. Everything I illustrate is on a separate layer. Yeah. So I can change the colour of every item of clothing, every leaf, yeah. every... Instantly. Every yeah. object. Yeah. So th that is the incredible advantage to working digitally sounds dead easy now you can do it on the computer I might, I might <laughs> yeah. Stuff, actually. yeah it's not quite like there's a, a program button. but um yeah th there's not a there's not a button that you press to nah. to illustrate a tree right okay yeah, in that yeah in that case probably, um, yeah probably not for me then. Maybe, maybe another couple of years yeah. and we'll be getting getting to that point in but. terms of the the psychology of working is there because writing is a, a bit of a labour of love, isn't it? When you're in the middle of it and you're kind of in the yeah. trenches of it and in the swamp of wading through the mm. mid-story trying to, trying to glue it all together. Is yeah. that the same with the sort of the illustration and stuff, the drawing, or is that more, I don't know, arty, for want of a better <laughs> description? Is it kind of just flowing? Um, or is it the same? To be honest, I'm probably a more disciplined illustrator than I am a writer. Right, okay. So, yeah, I've, I've come to rely on the discipline of illustration rather than finding a flow. Whereas with writing, as you say, I mean, some days it's it's just art. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you know, you can't find your way. I suppose you've got more of a brief and a deadline for illustrating as well, haven't you? Which probably makes it easier. Exactly. The, the, there's there's rules, there's a form to so how you work. Mm. And having done it, you know, for 26 years, you know, I can illustrate and listen to music and listen to the radio and listen to podcasts mm. now Come. these days he just needs to press a button on his computer to get it done <laughs> it's a lot easier a lot easier yeah. i can't do that with writing with writing i need full concentration and then yeah. as you say when it when it comes it, it's you know it's it's extraordinary that you lose you just lose hours in a story mm. um but yeah, when it yeah. doesn't it's a real struggle whereas illustration i could do it if I'm ill, I could do it. If I'm tired, right? Okay. Um, it's it's just become yeah. um, second nature to me. Like yeah, muscle yeah. memory almost. Are you a, are you a planner when it comes to writing? Is you say you like to you know you've got your it's structured out in front of you yeah. when you're illustrating. Do do you plan everything to great detail when you're writing? Uh, I when I started out, I didn't. Um, and then I started working with publishers, and they really liked to have a plan, and they kind of taught you how to do that. Um, yeah, but yeah. I didn't enjoy it because um you know part of the part of the enjoyment of writing a story is trying to find out where it's going to go um it's almost like reading a yeah. reading a book yeah. mm. and you know one of the reasons I, I write is to explore themes and emotions and and the possibility of drama and uh, incident in life mm. Um, yeah. Whereas when you plan something out, you know all the twists and turns. Yeah, I guess it's less fun if you already know what happens. There's an it? organic, you know, evolution that happens anyway. I mean, once I get to the halfway stage of a novel, I know the ending. You know, because it it just happens naturally that you kind of get a feel of where it's going to go. You don't quite know how you're going to get there. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't usually begin writing knowing the ending. Right. Okay. I want to. Uh, explore character and setting 
and the language as well is important to me. So yeah, yeah um, I don't I try not to plan it out, but uh, clearly when you're working yeah. with the publishers and you might be working with a, a book series, and it's very important to to know uh, where the end point is going to be. Sure, you write a lot of short stories as well, Do, you, Jason. Yeah, I was uh, I was reading I was reading some on your website. They they seem like very they're lovely little sort of tableau of they yeah. seem like very real moments yeah. as well they're quite whimsical <laughs> um yeah you obviously enjoy writing them have you, are you sort of constantly doing that is that something that you just you just kind of keep um, chipping away at when you have an idea yeah, or? short stories are hard yeah um and i don't feel i don't feel i understand them i don't feel i've, I've got a grip of them yet and i think that's why i keep going back to them and again it gives you the opportunity to change styles which is i enjoy mm. doing as an illustrator but i enjoy doing it as a writer too mm. my natural form is novels and novel yeah. length and um, stories um and i began writing short stories um almost to get into a, a character or to set up a premise uh, not knowing quite where it was going to go and also because of um the commitment to a novel is a big one you know it's yeah yeah six months a year two years you know it takes to to write a novel and that's exhausting sometimes <laughs> and so it's good just to have a kind of a palate cleanser but yeah i'd, I'd say that short stories are the hardest form for me you say you're still you're still sort of learning about the form of short stories what do you think you've learned so far they're really hard <laughs> <laughs> oh, there yeah, we go. I mean, there's a rhythm to them um and once you get the rhythm in, in the same way as novels uh, I've, when i first started writing for children i think the first thing i, I wrote was a 300 page kind of fantasy epic set in victorian london and so there's there's a pacing to that that's very different than a pacing to to a 30 page or a 15 page or even a one page short story and i find that really interesting yeah know? yeah are you working on anything at the moment writing wise yeah I'm a, novel? I'm a bit bleary eyed and exhausted today because uh, <laughs> um i've been looking through the copy edit of my latest um young adult novel how close to finishing is that? Sorry, that's a copy. Yeah, so that's about. it's got the final draft, and so it's just um, yeah. tweaking the last few lines and the last. Wow. Uh, it was few... going to be about the Loch Ness monster. Is decided. <laughs> it, it was. Yeah. It's now it's about a magic trick. <laughs> magic it's, yeah, it's a hundred-page uh, novel about a boy learning a magic trick. Um, Are you allowed to tell us about? I'm it? not allowed to say much, but. Um, it should be published in the spring by Anderson Press. So, um, and it will be an illustrator. Who, who's going to do the illustrations? <laughs> I'm going to get someone really good this time. <laughs> <laughs> that last bloke was rubbish. Oh, I reckon. I reckon Tom yeah, could yeah, do no, it no, now, couldn't he? Do. So he's. Yeah, well, you know. I'd give it a go. I'd give it a go. <laughs> See, I'd, I'd love to. I'd, you probably can't explain because it's something you do, but um, I just can't. I can't draw. I'm terrible at drawing. That connection, that bit between people's brain and their hands in terms of just doesn't i can't understand it yeah do you understand it uh no <laughs> no I, or does it just no no but it just it just happens yeah i mean i i, I thought i thought i was a bit of a freak to be honest because it, it seemed to come from nowhere no one in my family really right. drew but then I, I realized very late in life that um, my dad was um very creative and uh, when he retired he started sculpting and he was you know from being a normal working class bloke to sculpting. Bloody hell, he's gone full um, belt there going sculpting. Religious hasn't he? icons and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, he was clearly creative. We were just hiding it. Um, <laughs> and my mum, um, she was, she loved art when mm. she was young. So it was there. It was just hiding. Because yeah. I, feel, I feel very much the same way as Tom. I can't draw either. And that's why I find it, I, I find it difficult to sort of picture things as I'm writing. And I find it, even thinking about it now, it's difficult to comprehend that you don't have a sort of image in your head as you're writing that uh, that the, the illustrations come along later. Still seems very strange. Well, I think it's, again, that's a discipline. I think when I started, I probably did think very visually. I thought, you know, again, I, I love film and cinema. So I thought, well, it's not much different yeah. than watching a film. But um, mm. clearly it is, you know. The, I think you, you can fall into the trap of building up a very visual scene that just doesn't communicate itself on the page uh, without an illustration. Yeah. And and so it's that idea of, you know, killing your darlings with writing. There's the scenes that I've written which in the in the film would be, you know, the big special effect number. Yeah. Uh, but on the book it doesn't translate. In the book it doesn't translate um because it's it's a it's a literary mm. medium. So so yeah, I, I I think I've steered clear 
from it, to be honest. I think, again, it's a discipline that I've learned um, not to be too visual and, um, mm. to again, to let the, the form find its own way. Um, and then if it needs to be illustrated afterwards, then I, I just switch on that part of my brain again. Yeah. That must is that also true with graphic novels? Because I know you've worked on some graphic novels as well. Are, are they are they yes. other people's uh, writing that you've? No, it's no, it's always been, been my own. Apart from when I was when I was ten, when I illustrated <laughs> right. uh, some of the kids' comic, and that was quite good actually. But yeah, there were we had creative differences. Uh, they never worked again. Um, <laughs> but that seems like something where you really have to be thinking visually. You do. Yeah. Sometimes there's no words. It is literally just yeah, showing. Yeah. And yeah, that is more like a, a screenplay. Uh, where you're you're having to direct yeah, the yeah. action on the page as mm. well. Uh, it's not just the dialogue and the the voiceover, um, but it is stage direction. Yeah, and that is that can get really complicated. Yeah, yeah. But again, because um, most of the stuff I've just done for myself, um, I can change the writing <laughs> while I yeah, go yeah. along <laughs> if I come up with a nice image. I can't quite do that with the um, the illustrated. So I'd, be, I'd be like that. Yeah, I'd be like, well, oh, I can't, I can't draw a horse's face. <laughs> <laughs> I'll not have horses in this one. But yeah. the entire story's about a horse. I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. It's war horse, yeah. Tom. It's not <laughs> now, it's war cow. I can draw a cow. <laughs> when you illustrate another author's work, that they're, they're not too open to you changing <laughs> things like that. <laughs> no, imagine yeah. not. Yeah. I think Michael Mapurgo especially is very fierce about these I things. Remember, I remember <laughs> your story about JK when you phoned up JK Rowling. And said, well, what if he wasn't a wizard doing magic? What if he was the Loch Ness Monster? I thought it had legs, that idea, but apparently not. Uh, it would have been a very different story. Better? Better or worse? We, we can't tell because it never happened now, but, you know. It could be, couldn't exactly. it? It could be loads better. I just, yeah, it'd be brilliant. You're a monster, Harry. <laughs> well, he's writing that down. You can see, you can hear it. He's writing that down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that. Uh, so I was going to ask you just because I was curious. It's often what... a good reason to ask a question, that It is. Yeah. <laughs> um, the uh, there was a gra- there's a graphic novel. It looks like it's set in the war. Uh, what's that for? That looks amazing. Yeah, that was that was a book that I was developing that never got published. But um, mm. I yeah, I love that style. Again, there's there's a lot of projects mm. that you work on that uh, uh, you love and mm. you, you're very yeah, passionate yeah. about, but it never happens. I've had a couple yeah. actually set in uh, the Second World War, and the Second World War is a notoriously difficult <laughs> uh, period, especially for children's books. Um, and so it has to be yeah. exactly the the right kind of story. Yeah. You got to do your research as well. I you? did a lot of research on the Blitz. <laughs> and mm. It all came to nothing, um, but it's still there <laughs> in my head. Yeah. Um, so I'm just waiting for the right time. So potentially you might finish that. It's not it's not a case of uh, I probably that's... won't finish that, but I might develop the story in a different way and I think right. the the illustrations would have to be simpler because that's right. very elaborate work. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to illustrate a fully illustrated older book um, for mm. for teens or for adults um there's mm. you know the, there's a, a few books that have been out in in the last 10 or so years that have crossed over into the mainstream really yeah, from yeah. what we used to call children's books into say into um, adults yeah. reading them and yeah I've, I've, I've always loved comics i've always loved graphic novels so i'd i'd like to like to extend that somehow into it a fully illustrated, yeah. full-length novel. That's not a world I've ever got into, the whole graphic novel thing. If you were recommending, like, a starting place, where where would you tell people to go to? Um, well, there's there's the obvious one, which is um, Watchmen, which um, that was the big one when yeah. I was a teenager. Uh, coming from 2000 AD, so Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons were obviously yeah. big there. Yeah. Brian Bolland yeah. and Alan Moore did The Killing Joke. Um there's the Dave McKean and Neil Gaiman uh, books. Um, I love Violent Cases, which was oh, the yeah. first time I, I saw Dave McKean. And the first time I, I read Neil Gaiman, actually. Um, it's more of a little-known story. It's a very it's based on a Neil Gaiman short story. But I just think it's a, a beautiful book. So Right. Did they work on Sandman as well together? Yeah, that's they? right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Dave McKean is, is a genius. Um, so, yeah, I'd go say look at violent cases because it's not a, a traditional superhero comic it's more like a a little anecdote um from mm. childhood like i say it's a, it's a short story that's just been illustrated and it's it's beautiful cool i'll check it out 
Anything else, chaps? Well, there only one other thing, because obviously we've we've touched on some of the successes that you've had and some of the successes to come in the future. But there's one thing we haven't talked about, which seems to me to to rise above everything else, is that you were the recipient of the inaugural Blue Peter Book Award. I was. How did you know that? <laughs> I I read it. Uh, <laughs> and having never owned or met anyone with a Blue Peter badge, I'm, I'm intrigued as to know uh, what was that for and how did that come about. Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't get a badge. I got a I got a trophy, which un- unfortunately was made out of glass. And I had cats at the time, so I feel like I know the end of this story cat, already. <laughs> yeah, my, my cat smashed it. Actually, yeah. I think I think the first trophy was sent to me in the post, and it was already smashed. Oh. And then I asked for an, a replacement, and they sent oh. the replacement. Yeah. And then my cat destroyed oh. that. That's so, rubbish. Yeah. You, you can't I take that to a museum it... and try and get him free, <laughs> can you? Um, but yeah, it was for a book that I illustrated um, that was written by Geraldine McCorkran, who is, again, a genius writer and a wonderful person. Because um, you've done a few books with her, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I had a good relationship with her, and and yeah, again, we worked quite closely. So I met her. Um, her books again are very well researched, and she's a very intellectual and very intelligent writer. And so you have to you have to be quite accurate in um, how you uh, illustrate her books. You can't just knock them off in a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean. I was lucky enough to win that award with her, but um, it was for her writing, uh, frankly, I think. A bit like the Harry Potter books. Is that why you smashed the award? <laughs> for her I writing, kind really? I got quite jealous. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, some, sometimes sometimes the illustrations are, are a big selling point with a book. I think with picture books, um, that's the case. Yeah. It's the cover that you know draws the attention of the reader. Yeah, That's yeah. an interesting thing, actually. Cause it, it, do you find there's a, like, a big difference between you sort of front cover illustrations and your book illustrations because i know in a lot of in a lot of comics they get a, yeah you know they get a particular artist to do the cover and then get someone else to do the body of it and you buy the comic and then you're really disappointed in the <laughs> in <certain laughs> yeah, illustrations exactly. yeah because the covers the covers <laughs> where's the shading there's no bloody shading it's, it's like it's like jason's done the cover and i've done the inside uh yeah yeah I, i've never quite understood the u.s process of a uh, illustration i mean it's the same with yeah you know they yeah, have pencilers yeah. and and inkers and so and i think a lot of british illustrators who went to the states in the 80s and there was a big kind of invasion of the us with these incredibly talented british illustrators and i think they found yeah. that transition quite difficult um because obviously here they'd they'd pencil and ink their own work and sometimes yeah. even do the lettering um whereas there was suddenly there was such a demand um to for a quick turnaround on the work like they only had time for the penciling, and someone else would wow. ink it, and someone else would colour it. Um, I think that could be f- quite frustrating. I think I'd yeah. find that incredibly frustrating. Yeah. Probably because I, I you're wasn't, just the colour in a person. I wasn't. Well, I'm not confident yeah. enough. I know. I'm, technically, I'm I'm a very good illustrator, but I'm not confident enough in my um, pencil work, and a lot of my rendering is quite dense <laughs> and detailed to overcome <laughs> shortcomings <laughs> in in my actual drawing. Um, I feel like you're being a little bit modest there. Um, no, I've seen some of his stuff, um, John. It is a bit rough. I didn't want to say it before. But... <laughs> yeah, well, a friend's kid did ask me to draw a, a... I think he asked me to draw a dog once. And, yeah, he just tore it up and said, that's rubbish. He doesn't like a dog. <laughs> and I think that is the worst criticism I've ever had. I'm still hurting. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe, maybe we can help you with some worse criticism than that. Um, kind of Are these more pet peeves about <laughs> artists? I was, I was wondering whether, obviously, we need um, an image to use as our uh, front cover for the episode. Um, <laughs> yeah. Whether you'd have something to hand, or you can just press the button on your computer and do one for your um, <laughs> quick doodle for your for the failing writers podcast. An, an, maybe an unused picture of uh, the Loch Ness monster, <laughs> <Yeah>. just with <laughs> Jason the light day. on the we failing just... writers. Just put that on it. <laughs> Just, just be. Yeah. We've pretty much done it for him, to be honest. Brutally smashed <laughs> pen. <wouldn't we? laughs> just oh, it's a it. shattered Blue Peter Award <laughs> with, a, with a, a, a guilty looking cat next to it. Just the cat there with a the thought bubble going. Well, you're not getting any fucking museums now for free, are you, you bastard? <laughs> I can draw cats, not dogs, obviously. Yeah, oh dear, don't. Let's not dig up the old wounds over the dogs. 
<laughs> well, thank you very much, Jason. It's really yeah, kind of you to come you. on. And thanks for having Absolute me. Pleasure. Oh, Absolute pleasure. You're very welcome. Pleasure. Thanks for coming. Oh, I should mention, uh, sorry, I nearly forgot. If um, I should mention to our listeners, if you want a taster of uh, Jason's incredible variety of work, have a look at thelittleyellowbird.co.uk. Uh, that'll knock your socks off. And also uh, his short stories. You can check out at, what's that one, lovelikeatoms.com. That's lovelikeatoms.com, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. But we'll put all the links in the episode notes anyway, uh, including a link to uh, including a link to the book, We Were Wolves. Yeah, and a, and a link to pet peeves about artists. I want at yes, least ten. Definitely. definitely. <laughs> and like, why do they wear berets all the time? That oh, just doesn't make that. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Flouncing around. What's your biggest pet peeve about artists, Jason? Um, like the ones you've worked with or been at college with or whatever? Or what the, was the... The, they're very vulnerable to criticism. Ah, okay. Yeah, kind of die inside. <laughs> that, that right. especially, especially about, yeah. especially about dogs. Yeah. Never listen to children. That's true. They don't know that's what they're true. talking about, do they? <laughs> I bet that I bet that kid yeah, can't that, that, draw a dog my, to save his chuffing life. I, see, I so. hope you just I hope you just looked him in the eye and just went, "Well, you draw a fucking dog." <laughs> from, from twenty six years illustrating children's books, yeah, that is the lesson: is not listen to children. Yeah. <laughs> Either that. <laughs> Or brutally, <laughs> brutally disfigure his dog to make it look like the illustration, and then go, "What are you talking about? That is perfect. That is perfect." Uh, wow. We've <laughs> <laughs> only let Jason go before we've moved down any other dark court. It's getting yeah, that's true. <laughs> getting darker. Getting darker. Well, thanks very much indeed for chatting to us. And uh, thank you. Yes. Have, enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. Thanks, thank Jason. You. Cheers, Jason. Bye. Bye. Probably a good thing that we ended it there, isn't it? Cause it was, <laughs> it was getting a bit, yeah. yeah. Mutilate probably, the yeah. child's dog, then that was. Go- <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. So, okay. chaps, are you yeah. are you genuinely that bad at drawing? Yes. Oh God, awful. Really? Yeah. I can't draw. I can't write. I mean, you know, like my handwriting is dreadful. I feel like we. Sh- I w- it's just yeah. I just don't have that connect between some vision coming out of my head to being able to translate it into into drawing yeah i just i literally don't understand how properly artistic people can no. draw something and you know like when they're doing layers of, of things something in the foreground and background of what to draw first or how that doesn't work yeah, whatever, yeah. mess that up and it's like if it someone says uh draw, draw a dog i can see a dog in my head but it's really hard to translate yeah. that into a picture why would it why is it hard like, if you can recognize a dog you almost, should be able to draw, said, a draw a dog draw a cartoon dog I can see a picture of a cartoon yeah. dog in my head, and I, you should yeah, be able to exactly. trace it, shouldn't you? Almost out, out your mind. But there I must be a, <laughs> there must be a pathway between the brain and the arm <laughs> that, for some people, actually yeah. works, yeah. but for us, just doesn't. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? Like I exactly the same. I can see what I want to draw, but I no, it doesn't work. I can't if I put a pen on the paper. But then I don't know because even if I just put a pen on a piece of paper, it smudges. <laughs> like even before I. So you just no matter what I'm trying to write or draw, a pen. it's just a smudgy. I think I've just got <laughs> meat hands that don't with no I dexterity really, at all. I, this That's doesn't what I'm necessarily work for the podcast, but I really want to do a quick experiment uh, and just can we just draw something really quickly <laughs> and we'll just post it up on the website. <laughs> well, right now, just write. Yeah, just draw something. Just like anything. Well, you, no, you've got to give us. A, yeah, it needs to give us a subject. So we need to draw the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's draw a cow. All right. We'll all have a go, and then we'll. Uh, WhatsApp it to each other. I've got All right, a bit of paper. A cow. Just All a right. cow, yeah. A All cow, right. just a cow. This is how bad I am at, at drawing. I've literally just started trying to draw a cow. Drawing a nose that looks a bit too much like a pig's nose and then rips it up <laughs> and put it in the bin. No, you're not allowed to do <laughs> that. that again. And you're not allowed a reference. Oh, this looks like a donkey already. I've only done <laughs> my years. Like it looks a like a donkey. Mine looks a bit what donkey does it f- like. Oh, Jesus. It's not getting any less donkey-like. Oh, that looks a bit cow-like. You know, how was it Picasso oh. that used to do those pictures in one swirl, one without the pen leaving the paper? Oh, I should... I've just drawn half a cow like that that looks a little bit like a horse donkey. This just looks so much... Why, if, uh, but the thing is, if you'd have said draw a mm-hmm. horse... You would have nailed it. I wouldn't have been able to do it. <laughs> but this cow... Oh, I had to walk past cows every day on the way to school as a kid. Um... Oh, it's a horse. Oh, my <laughs> God, that's terrible. 
Oh, and that's big udder there. Ooh, udders, that's a good tip, Jonathan. Oh, yeah, udders. <laughs> could you see, good job you said udders there and explain about foregrounds and backgrounds. Otherwise, it's back leg would have been in front. It would have had two legs on the same <laughs> side, basically, which uh, would have given an unstable count. How do I make this not look like a horse now? I don't think I can. Hang on. I, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Dave, you can't just write cow and put an arrow pointing towards it. <laughs> no, I haven't written cow. <laughs> I have not written cow. There we go. Cow. <laughs> Look at that. freaking cow. Every day of the week. Mine looks like a cow that's running to like an electrified fence really hard or something. Or <laughs> it's just really nice. Oh, I've not. The front is pretty. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm taking a photo. Mine looks like something that a five-year-old kid would draw and then go, that's not very good. I'll do another one. Right, here you go. I'm going to send you mine now. <laughs> in mine I've just seen yours and now I, I don't feel so bad about mine oh, that's good. Like, he does actually um, he does actually look, he looks like George from Rainbow yours Tommy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh Birdy yours does look like a nice horse it just does look like a nice Huge horse tits. with massive udders oh, that's good John oh bloody hell John that actually looks like a cow yeah. So we, we agree, we agree my, mine's probably the best. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty so. sure. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that is the best. I think I've brought... It's got the most personality. It's got something of brought... Eeyore about it. Uh, it has, is not it? It looks a bit it has. Kind of... yeah, yeah. Yeah. But why has it got a, why has it got you... a tusk? That's yeah. the tongue. I was <laughs> wondering tongue that. Cows always have the tongue sticking out, don't they? Oh, ah. right. okay. Wait, Tommy? Yeah. What's happened to his ears? What ears? <laughs> <laughs> what? And... Uh, He's a cow with no <laughs> ears. <laughs> Did you not think cows had ears? What about its neck? Why is <laughs> it's just a, a body with a head on the end? I think I just lost it when I got to the head bit, didn't I? <laughs> if you, if you, yeah. I start. <laughs> see, I started the with a head. Well. And, uh, you should have started with a head. See, that's what I mean. Went downhill from there. Yeah, My but, brain doesn't tell me things like yeah, this. But I started with a <laughs> horse's head. Did you start with the teeth? He's got really good teeth that day. Well, they, you know, they spend all day chewing. I like how you're giving yours um, like separate breasts, Dave. <laughs> oh, no, <that> <laughs> yeah. They were very He's much, yeah, that's what I mean. Very much an afterthought. And uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I think we've proved See? the point yeah. there. How to bring this point. illustration special. To a perfect end. <laughs> and if you want to see them, just uh, pop along to failingwriterspodcast.com uh, and go to the blog and you'll find yeah. them there. Uh, and then leave, a, keep you leave us a review, yeah. not just of the podcast, but of our <laughs> individual artwork as well. Yeah. yeah. Or send us, send us a picture of your cow. In, and uh, good maybe idea. in a future podcast we'll discuss it. Oh, well, that's lovely. Isn't it? So what we got coming up next week? Oh, next week we are going to have our brainstorm oh yes which is which is like a whole new chapter it in the podcast really, yeah. really. Yeah. bit of a separate adventure that's going to be running through yeah, yeah. this is a kind of an ongoing um, one as well isn't yeah. it yeah so oh, and we'll leave that we'll tease it we'll tease it for okay. us but, okay. let's not give away too much now. yeah have a listen next week and uh join us on a journey of probable failure <laughs> <laughs> almost certain failure yeah yeah but until then dear listener um goodbye Oh, hang on, don't forget. Oh! Don't forget, if you like the podcast, mention it to like-minded folk. You know, send a little tweet out if you want. Don't hold don't hold it all inside. Yeah? Yeah. Share the love. Share Make it around. Yeah. Enter the competition. Enter the competition. Win yourself £100. Pounds. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then spend that £100 on stamps and send people letters telling them to listen to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's only That's fair. Great it's idea. only fair, isn't yeah. it? Tatty bye. Cheerio then, everybody. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. Where's everybody gone?